all right so welcome to another um video in our series of um biology lectures for jam exam so this is going to be the the sixth topic in the jam syllabus and we'll, we'll be looking at the internal structure of organisms so in this topic we're particular about the internal structure of plant and also the internal structure of a mammal so um We'll consider the internal structure of the root, the stem, and the leaves. And we'll compare the root, stem, and leaf between the monocot plant and the dicot plant. So basically, you should be able to draw and label, or be able to label the internal structure of the root of dicot, the internal structure of the stem of dicot and monocot, and of course, the internal structure of the leaves of monocot and dicot. So you should be, when, you, when you are able to do that, the... The objective for this um, chapter or this topic would have been achieved. So, without much ado, let's dive in and look at the book Explicit Biology, which is our guide. So, what you have here is the internal structure of the root. And then this diagram shows the longitudinal section of a dicot root. Let me show this diagram with a more colorful, um, colorful image. So if you look at this diagram, it's divided basically into three sections. You have the apical meristem, which is the region of rapid cell elongation. And you also have the, the elongation zone. Sorry, the apical meristem is the region of rapid cell division. While the, there is another region of elongation and you have a region of cell differentiation here. Now, if you consider this diagram, if you move inwards from the outermost part into the center of the of this um, root, you are going to be going from the root air, which is this elongated structure, then to the um, epidermis. You have the cortex, which is colored in brown, to um, the endodermis, which is colored in yellow, and you have the pericycle, which is colored in purple and you have the steel or the pit which is the central the central structure now if you further examine the steel you have the phloem and the xylem inside this portion and where the phloem and the xylem meet is the cambium which is responsible for the um the, the structure the secondary structure of um of the root or the the stem it gives additional strength to plant now i haven't looked at the internal structure of a dicot root let us consider the um, comparison between the the monocot root and the dicot root primarily they look very similar except for the arrangement at the um, within this endodermis so you also you have it if you are going inward you have the root air the epidermis the cortex the endodermis you have the pericycle you have the protoxylem you have the metaxylem you have the pit and you have the phloem similarly if you consider the um the monocot root you have the root air you have the epidermis you have the the cortex you have the endodermis and you have the phloem and the the xylem so what you observe however is the 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 width of the the pit in the, at the in the center of both of them you see that in the that cut root it has a wider pit compared to that of the monocot root again if you also consider the internal structure of the monocot and die cut stem they are quite different here you do not have the pit in the monocot stem you have the the vascular bundle which is formed by the phloem and the xylem and it's scattered within the cortex so you have the cortex and you have the phloem and xylem scattered in between in the within the, the cortex of course you have the the epidermis and of course you have the ground tissue now, if you take a closer look at the dicot stem, you have epidermis, then you have the xylem and the phloem being separated 
by the cambium. So like I said, where the cambium meets, where the xylem and phloem meet forms the, the cambium. But you have you can see that the that cut stem is well arranged and you have the pit in the center which is missing in the monocot stem. If you go back to this uh, um, the exclusive biology, um, you can see better um, diagram that is showing the monocot and the that I mean the monocot um, the monocot stem here and the the dicot stem in this case. So you can see the the pit and you can see the hollow center in the stem. Here the pit is absent. You just have the vascular bundle scattered within the cortex and you have the epidermis as the outer part. So you should be able to tell these diagrams apart. You should be able to tell which is the dicot stem from the monocot stem. Similarly, you should also be able to tell the monocot um, root from the dicot root. So that's the essence of this chapter. Uh, furthermore, we will consider the internal structure of the leaf of a monocot and the dicot. You can see these two diagrams look very similar. Number one fundamental difference you might notice is the is the arrangement of these structures here that is called the mesophyll. The mesophyll is neatly arranged within the monocot stem. I mean, within the monocot leaf, while it is a bit scattered within the dicot leaf. Furthermore, the this mesophyll um, tissue is divided into two in the dicot leaf. You have the palisade and the sponge. So you have what you call the 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 spongy um, mesophyll and the the palisade mesophyll. As a matter of fact, when the mesophyll divides into two, it forms a structure called parenchyma. So you can actually say the spongy parenchyma and the palisade parenchyma. Again, what you see that is very similar to both of them, the two, um, the leaf structure in monocot and dicot would be the stoma on the um, epidermal surface, the lower surface. This allows, the stoma allows air into the leaves. And the stoma is being guarded by two cells that are called the guard cells. All right, now let's consider this diagram in it's not so clear in the explicit biology, but I've shown you a, a clearer diagram here. So if you are able to um, understand these diagrams clearly, you would have fulfilled the, the objective of this chapter or this topic in the JAM syllabus. Again, um, you would be asked to be able to label, you should be able to label the internal structure of organs in a mammal. So basically, you should just be able to tell where the the vital organs are. For example, the the body cavity is divided in mammals into the chest. You have the abdomen, okay, and this division is provided by the structure called the diaphragm that that is what divides the thorax that's the chest from the abdomen that's fu fundamental then the organs in the chest or the thorax include the lungs the heart the heart is covered by pericardium and of course the organs in the abdomen include the stomach you have the liver you have the kidney and of course the intestine so you should also be able to to understand embryonic de development in the in the uterus you should be able to tell the uterus apart all right and of course you should understand that mammals give birth to their young ones alive and they provide nutrition uh, nutrition to the young ones using the mammary gland so basically that is the entire scope of this to, um, this chapter of the syllabus 
then there are questions you can play around with. For example, this question in, um, let's look at question number two here, 1985, question number 13. Which of the following is common to a dicotyledonous stem and monocotyledonous roots? So, um, number one, it says medullary ray. You have the central pit and you have the wide cortex, you have the narrow cortex, you have the pericycle fiber. Of course, the answer is staring at you in the face. If you consider, remember the question says dicotyledonous stem and monocotyledonous root. So let's go back to the image. Maybe that would help. So dicotyledonous stem, this is a dicot stem here. And then you have monocotyledonous root. This is a monocot root here. What do you find that is common to both of them? A dicot stem and monocot root have the central pit in common. So you find the central pit here and you have the central pit here as well. So another question will be 1987, question number 15. The correct sequence of tissues in the anatomy of a young that cotyledonous stem from the inside to the outside is so if you are moving from the inside for a dicotyledonous stem for example of course you should know that it will have a pit that will be the central part so if you'll be moving from the pit so the your answer would be sorry um yes of course your, your answer would be either a or c but now let us see you are moving here from the pit you move to the xylem so now that knocks out option a now because from the pit you move to the xylem first and you move to the cambium and then you move to the phloem and then you move to the cholenchyma parenchyma and epidermis let's look at this diagram quickly so you can see you are moving from the pit and you're going to the xylem. After the xylem, you have the cambium, which is separating the xylem from the phloem. And then you move in that direction, in that order. So the right um, answer to this question will be option C. All right. So if we look at another diagram, let's look at, for, for example, let me see if there is any question on, oh, very good. Internal structure of the, this is, um, Question 45. Question number 45. It says you have this diagram, which is, of course, the internal structure of um, a, a dicot leaf, right? So the major site for photosynthesis is the, the palisade mesophyll. Okay? And what is the structure of the palisade mesophyll here? That would be option B, Roman figure 2. All right. So let's look at another question. Let's say, for example, um, okay, question number 40. The thyroid gland is located in this structure, the trachea, option C. So there are a couple of questions you can also solve in the test book and then you find the answers with the explanations at the back. On that note, let me end this video here. And if you have any question, please leave a comment for me. Like, share and um, subscribe, please. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.